Now, every now and then, an SUV comes along that likes to think a little differently than the others. One such SUV is the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, the Jeep Grand Cherokee is in its fifth generation. It just been launched in India at 77.5 lakh rupees ex showroom. That's an introductory price. But what we are here to find out today is how is the Grand Cherokee to drive? How are the interiors? Is it a comfortable SUV for the family? So let's get started with that. Hi, my name is Dhruv Paliwal. You're watching AutoX and today we're driving the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, as we look at this front end, I think it's apparent that the Jeep Grand Cherokee has the Jeep styling inherently built in into it. First of all, these headlamps here are really sleek. These are LED reflector units, work really well. Secondly, you have this Jeep logo right here in the center of the bonnet, where it is found on all Jeep models. Then the seven slat grille from Jeep, which is obviously another traditional Jeep hallmark. So it's in one glance, it's apparent that this is a Jeep. Now this grille here, it's not blocked out like that it is on the compass. And one really cool feature over here is this camera now this is part of the 360 degree camera setup that you get on the jeep grand cherokee but there is this tiny water nozzle here down here when i press this particular space on the touch screen it squirts out water and cleans this camera now that's a really cool feature down here below also you have your air dam you have your parking sensors up front which tell you about your distance uh, they give you a warning on the touch screen when you're getting too close to an obstacle in the front and this underlining of chrome here i think it really gives it that Jeep feel. This is a very bold design, but it's graceful at the same time. And I think that's what really speaks to me about this front end of the Jeep Grand Cherokee. All right, let's move on to the side over here. And the first thing that draws my attention over here are these alloy wheels. I mean, they are big, they're chunky. And uh, even at the launch when I was there, I saw these alloy wheels, even though the lighting was very dim out there, I felt like they looked really big. And these are only 20 inches. I mean, there are bigger SUVs, there are bigger performance SUVs that... Now, there are other bigger, larger, faster SUVs that give you bigger alloy wheels, but the, the way the size just pops out on the Jeep Grand Cherokee is something that feels really nice to me. It feels really nice to look at. I think the design, the simple five-spoke design, chunky spokes this also speaks volumes about the way jeeps want to do things the way they want to make the grand cherokee look uh, and i think that's really aces in my book obviously you have this black cladding underneath all around the wheel wells uh, it gives you that feeling that this vehicle it's meant to go off-road it's a little rugged it's meant to take on sub abuse uh, the grand cherokee badging can be found onto the side you have these nice large chunky rvms they give you a really good view from the inside and these are also heated by the way so if there's mist on them you can simply just switch on the heating and it uh it blows the mist away uh, there's also a blind spot monitoring system on the jeep grand cherokee and the indicator for that is also here on the side as we walk further towards the rear it's got a really boxy nice long boxy design and it's very jeep like very suv like as you come towards the rear of the jeep grand cherokee you see these minimalistic sleek led lights at the rear and they remind you a bit of the meridian i think it's a family look that jeep is going for here because most of the cars are now coming with sleek led lights at the rear i personally like it uh, what about you let us know in the comments box down below now as far as the badging is concerned you have another jeep badge over here in the center not too brightly not too shouty just sitting there in the center uh, not in your face too much you have a 4x4 badge there on the left and this limited badge here on the right now as you're talking about the limited badge let me just tell you this the jeep grand cherokee it's available in only one variant 4x4 is standard there's only one version of the jeep grand cherokee that you can buy in india so you really won't be confused about which one to buy it's only going to confuse you how much you're going to have to spend to get this car home but more on that later now let me show you this we showed you one camera in the front with a really peculiar feature. You've also got a reversing camera over here, obviously. It's also got its own water nozzle. And there's another camera right here. It's the camera for the IRVM. We're going to tell you more about it once you get inside. And it's also got its own water nozzle over here. So that's really nice. I mean, the cameras, they can stay clean all the time, no matter what weather conditions you are driving in. And with that, let's step inside the car. Okay, 
now we're inside the cabin of the cheap grand cherokee and first things first uh the seat here it's nicely sculpted it's not too big uh, so i don't think it'll be able to accommodate very large passengers very nicely but for my size it's been perfectly made the bolstering it's neither too aggressive nor too passive i think it supports me just well but it doesn't feel like i'm being held in against inside the seat against my wishes overall i think the cushioning also is uh, neither too soft neither too hard is going to work perfectly well for shorter for longer distances so that's a big thumbs up for the seats obviously both these seats are also uh, fully electrically adjustable the driver seat gets a memory function as well next up let's come to the steering wheel uh, the steering wheel here is nice it's round it's chunky it's finished in this nice leather like material you've got the switches on the steering wheel they help you the left side bits they help you control the MID, the instrument cluster in front of me, which we'll get to in one bit. They also allow you to answer the telephone and rearrange the instrument cluster. The controls on the right side of the steering wheel are for the cruise control. Now you have the regular cruise control here and also the adaptive cruise control, which lets you set your distance to the car in front and then the car can automatically slow down or speed up according to the car in front and what it is doing. You also have paddle shifters here. You don't really feel like using them a lot, but I'll talk to them about when you're driving the car. And there are also these buttons on the back of the steering wheel in typical Jeep fashion. They help you control the music system, as in you can fast forward, you can go to the next song, you can rewind, or you can control the volume of the system. One small complaint over here is that these stocks, these indicator and wiper stocks, they're made of hard plastic. And that kind of takes away from the Jeep Grand Cherokee's impression just a little bit. Next up, we have the instrument cluster in front of us. It's a nice, bigger than 10 inch display and it's really nice to look at because it's highly customizable. It's a fully digital unit. The graphics are sharp, they're clean uh, and they look really nicely premium. The good thing about the display is that it's highly configurable. So you can set up whatever information you want about the car, about your music, about your calls, about your navigation, the, all the important bits like the temperature gauges, like the fuel display, the outside temperature, the compass, everything here is customizable and you can fit it how you want on the screen. Also the display quality, once again, I should mention because it's really, really nice. It's really good. Something, I think the display has just been overall done really well and it also has a lot of familiarities with the Jeep Compass. Uh, next up, the screen over here, it's also an HD display. The screen, it's slightly raked, it's inset into the dashboard and it, the design incorporation has been done really well. I think I really like the fact that the screen is not overtly big. A lot of cars, a lot of bigger SUVs are nowadays coming with big screens in the center and they kind of take away from the driving experience because they're so in your face. As far as the screen is concerned, it's a very good display, it's very crystal clear. The touch quality over here is great, the buttons, features on the screen are laid out very well. You can get to features, even though there's a lot of stuff you can do on the screen, it doesn't take a lot for you to get to where you want because things are laid out so well. Obviously, when you buy the car new, uh, it's gonna take some time for you to get used to all of this, but once you do, it doesn't really take a lot to get to the menu that you're looking for. There are also switches on the top here, which has, is a really nice, cool feature. And what this does is, there's a passenger screen right here for the passenger. It allows you to switch that on and off. Obviously, I'm sitting here, I cannot look at that display. It's almost uh, blank to my eyes, but anyone who's sitting on this scene will be able to have their own personal display, will be able to configure their phone as well, which is a really nice touch. Uh, uh, next up, you have the park sense button over here. All the parking aids that are there on this car, obviously the traction control, the lane control, all of these buttons over are over here. Next up, you have your ventilated seats, your heated steering. Obviously, nine months out of twelve in India, you're not going to be using this, but I think it's a really cool feature for when you do go live the jeep life apart from that you have ventilated seats the front seats are both heated and cooled apart from that there is this wireless charger over here a lot of space for you to tuck in your smartphone you have usb type a type c you have two connecting ports here aux port you have an hdmi port for the passenger and a cigarette lighter or a 12 volt power socket so there's not a dearth of amenities in the front half of this Jeep's cabin. Lastly, there's an auto hold feature over here, but there's a lot of blank switches next to it and that kind of take away from the feel a tad bit. There's this mode selector over here. You've got sport, auto, snow, and sand slash mud. And this is the transmission selector. It's a round unit. Uh, I think it's really nicely done. The knurl finish on the edges of 
the selector it really gives it a nice texture you can really grip it well and it looks damn good you've got two cup holders in the center you've got this deep storage space here inside the bottom has a soft padding but the sides they have hard plastics so things could get scratched also you have this top shelf over here which has my cable in here right now but you can store anything like coins or anything this has been fully nicely well padded so i think that's a big thing the dashboard over here it's quite small it's a small space but it is well padded so anything that you keep in here is not going to be spoiled or going to scratch the enclosure the space inside the dashboard next up let's come up to the panoramic sunroof as i open this button there are three different buttons here either you want to open just the blind or the sunroof or you want to put the sunroof in venting position so you have got different individual buttons for all of that i think that makes it really convenient when you're trying to operate the sunroof while you're driving the car because sometimes the sunroof just has a mind of its own you'll press something it'll do something else that's uh, something that jeep has alleviated by giving you different controls for different functions of the sunroof lastly i want to tell you about something really cool that i talked also about outside your irvm right now this button has been pushed to the back and it's giving me a regular IRBM view that you get in normal cars. That means I can see my inside headdress and everything inside the car as well as outside the car. Now, if I want just the outside view, I simply switch it over like this. And this button over here, it helps me. It gives me a display, a camera feed on what's outside on here i mean it's going to take a little getting used to you can even adjust the brightness of the screen using these buttons there's not a lot of adjustability but it does brighten things up just a little bit and i think that's a really cool feature a lot of people are going to be really uh, happy that they have such a cool feature in their car and also the camera it gives you a slightly wider view than what is possible if you're just looking in the mirror with that, we're done with the first half of the cabin. Let's step into the rear and find out what that's like. Uh, all right, this is the second half of the Jeep Grand Cherokee's cabin. And you know what, initially, when I had done a walk around of this car at the launch, my complaint was the seat. But I think over here, I have to say this, the seat, it's comfortable, but yes, it is small in size. You can see that a lot of my thighs do not have under thigh support. There's got a lot of room here, but the angle which my legs are at is not the most comfortable. But do you know for whom this angle will be comfortable? Kids. And suddenly now I know what the Jeep Grand Cherokee is all about. It's not a chauffeur driven SUV. This is an SUV for the family that you're supposed to be driving and the kids are supposed to be at the back and then it works really well. With that out of the way, uh, let's talk about the second half of the cabin. Obviously, first of all, you have this nice manual sun blind over here. Feels very premium to use, uh, blocks out a lot of the sunlight, makes the cabin a much more bearable space when there's a lot of boiling hot sunlight outside. With that out of the way, uh, there's this lock and unlock button here at the back. Now, I don't know uh, if that's a good idea with kids at the back. I'm sure you can disable these buttons from the screen. I'm not so sure about that. The switches here, they feel rubberized, very nice to touch. But the plastic around them, not so nice, hard plastic. Uh, also hard plastic here, down on the doors. Uh, I mean, top half of the cabin where you will be touching stuff, things are premium. But Jeep has just done that little bit of cost cutting, even in the front half of the cabin for that matter. Lower down areas, they are made of hard plastic and that's my one gripe with this car. If you notice that it's in hard plastic, it makes you feel not so nice. But apart from that, I think the user experience is really, really nice. These uh, nettings over here also, they kind of feel a little bit on the not so good side, uh, but that's an individual choice. Uh, then there is this nice slot over here for you to keep your phone when you're charging it from one of these four ports that are down here. Uh, this is upraised down here, so at least your phone doesn't get scratched and it feels a little bit premium. The air vents are also nice. You can individually control the airspeed. And you also have a nice 230 volt socket over here. So your laptops and stuff that cannot be charged from these ports is also kept charged. Is also topped up for those longer journeys where you are not coming back home for a while. You also have these two buttons here and what they do is these are the controls for the heating of these two side seats. 
Now, obviously, India being a country where nine out of twelve months are generally hot, I don't know how wise an idea it is to have heated seats, but they will definitely be comfortable in the winters. And I would have really loved it if there was. a cooling function a ventilation function which would have kept you cool in the summers that's uh, definitely a miss but it's one of the very few misses in this jeep grand cherokee now let me show you the boot as well now obviously when you're going to be going an adventure <laughs> in your jeep with your family you're going to be taking lots and lots of luggage And the Jeep Grand Cherokee has enough space to take in loads. Obviously, you have this retractable flap over here, uh, which acts as a privacy for your luggage. Uh, it's a privacy wall. Uh, this flap is also completely removable if you just need that tad bit of more space. You have this nice flat boot space over here. Uh, I think small children can even sleep in here, but we don't advise that. Even if you're laying down here, keep the boot open. Let me show you this. It's a huge, huge space saver underneath. It's a 245 section tire. It's an 18-inch steel wheel. They are subject to like 80 kmph. The uh, manufacturers recommend that you do not go above that. If you have this one on, you can go up till 120 kmph. Just saying. Uh, as far as other amenities here are concerned, you have lighting over here and here. Obviously, you cannot see them right now because it's the daytime. But at night, they'll help you. They'll illuminate the area where you're standing. There's also a 12 volt DC socket here at the rear. Uh, you can power up your, uh, say, your portable uh, tire inflator and things like that. Uh, stuff camping gear if you want to inflate that. If you want to use your camping gear, which can be run off a 12 volt socket, you can do that. And uh, I mean space could have been more if they had probably utilized this underneath storage area very really well there is no deep boot here but still i think for four people for two adults two kids this is a lot of space to pack in your luggage one thing generally the button to close the boot is here on most cars but on the jeep grand cherokee it's over here uh, no biggie is just something that you need to get used to uh, but the jeep grand cherokee does have a self closing boot and that's a good deal Now let you know what let's go drive the car Okay now we sat behind the wheel of the Jeep Grand Cherokee and we are driving it first things first this is a petrol only car you have a 2 liter turbo petrol engine underneath the bonnet and yes a lot of you might be thinking you know what what's a 2 liter turbo petrol going to do in a car this big And initially before I had driven it I would have agreed with you. Now this 2 liter turbo petrol engine makes 270 brake horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. There's an 8 speed torque converter and a 4x4 system. It's an automatic system. It's on all the time. And yeah, initially you might think that this is less but it's not for your regular everyday typical driving. There's enough power for you to waft forward effortlessly. The Jeep Grand Cherokee doesn't feel bogged down anywhere. It doesn't feel underpowered in any circumstance until you start outrightly caning the car where you're going from 0 to the red line in each gear and over there yes obviously a 2 liter will start showing its age will start showing its size but none of you are going to be doing that if you're going the Grand Cherokee you're buying the Grand Cherokee to go around to cruise around to do long highway journeys in an effortless manner and for that purpose this engine works really well as far as the refinement goes i think the refinement of the engine is also really nice uh, you can hear the engine inside but it's a sporty exhaust note kind of a sound it's not a thrum it's not a thrashy sound that makes its way inside the engine also the engine feels relaxed all the time it doesn't feel like it's being stressed out that's generally the case when you put a small engine in a large car that generally tends to happen but in the jeep grand cherokee that's really not the case the throttle is a little eager right at the beginning and that's why also when you use the auto hold feature when you let go of the brake and the car doesn't move and you have to get on the throttle to move it's sometimes a little jerky but once you understand how this throttle works once you understand that it's a little jerky on uh, right at the moment you press it uh, i think you compensate for it and then things just seem to be 
a smoother experience from there on onwards uh, also you have these modes here obviously you have auto you have sport uh, sport mode just livens up your throttle there is no real change in amount the amount of power the engine is giving you then you have your snow and sand mode obviously in snow mode there's a lot of traction control stepping in to help you but in sand and mud mode the opposite happens and the traction control is kind of switched off by the car and that means that you can continuously keep your tires spinning in sand and mud to get out of a tricky situation uh, apart from that, uh, when it comes to steering, there's not a lot of feel and feedback here. Yes, there is a bit that you can feel, but obviously in a car this size, you're not really looking for a lot of sportiness. What you are looking for is comfort. Now, first of all, uh, to do triple digit cruising speeds on the highway, this steering is set up really, really well. I think the heft that there is to this particular steering, it's very well tuned. It weighs up progressively. You feel that you're always in control of the car. And that's a really nice way of tuning a steering for some car which you're going to be covering a lot of miles in. As far as uh, turning it goes, as you can see, it's not effortless, but it's also not asking you to do a lot. Uh, it doesn't really take a lot of effort turning the steering wheel. So U-turns driving in the city is not going to be cumbersome either. Apart from that, uh, the gearbox, the shifts are well smoothed out. If you ask for too much of it in one go, yes, it sometimes does jerk you around. But that's a rarity. If you start driving this car and if you drive it in a normal fashion, sometimes you do not even feel the gear shifts, uh, especially at the higher end of the gears that are there. This is an 8-speed automatic. At the lower end, yes, sometimes if you get on the throttle a little too excitedly, it can seem to jerk you around. But apart from that, it's a very, it's a super refined experience something that's worthy of a car this size of a car that costs this much money the right quality now that's something i really want to talk about because honestly it's plush a lot of the stuff that is there out on the roads is flattened out some people might find it to be a little harsh in a in certain places but that's because the compression of this car is that's really soft it's the rebound uh, it's when you when the suspension is fully compressed and it's coming back to its original position that is being feels like it's been set up a little stiff and I can understand it's a heavy car so once you go into a pothole and you come out of it you want the car returning to its natural stance as quickly as possible and if the rebound is a little stiff it helps that do that and honestly it also adds to the driving dynamics of the car obviously this is not the most sportiest of cars around but if you do have to make like an emergency maneuver uh, then the steering really works well and the car stays as planted as it can be and I think that's a big compliment for a car of this size or a car that's supposed to keep you comfortable and you're not supposed to be going corner carving with this car so I think for on that front I think the ride quality has been tuned really well now also this car comes with a lot of ADAS features uh, Generally, we do not test out on a lot of ADAS features because testing ADAS features in India is kind of something that's not that cannot be benchmarked because conditions change everywhere and our experience with each car is different. But what I can say is this, that the ADAS system on this, it's not very intrusive. Yes, you do feel uh, corrections happening in the steering field, but they're not something that will throw you off in other cars especially the collision avoidance warning system on this in other cars we felt that cars can sometimes break very rapidly and very harshly and that has the effect that someone who's traveling behind you might not understand that you'll be breaking so hard for no reason and could come and crash into you those kind of problems we've not faced on this car but we leave the ADAS review for another time uh, when we do have the opportunity to test the system fully to find out how it really works out so that covers our engine the right quality or uh, the features we've already talked about i think the overall drive experience of the jeep grand cherokee can be termed very very comfortable now as we had said at the beginning of this video this is an suv that does things a little differently 
That's in the fact that this is a really comfortable, expensive SUV, but this is not one that should ideally be chauffeur driven. This is one that you should be driving yourself and you should be taking your family out on trips in this car. Obviously, it works well in the city as well, but primarily, this is the car which lets you embrace your adventurous side. Now, as far as off-roading is concerned, we do not have the space to truly test its off-road chops for now, but we shall do that later when we get the car back for a little more time with us. Today, we've only had it for a few hours and that's why we've kept it limited to the city limits, to the highway limits and to telling you what this SUV would be like to live with on an everyday basis. Thank you so much for watching this video and until the next one, goodbye.